Life Church 7. It is so good to see each one of you. Wow. I want to commend all of you for just doing such a great job of connecting and greeting one another. It's so good. How many are happy that 2019 is gone and 2020 is here? Amen. How many had such a good 2019 that you'd like a repeat? Okay. All right. Most of us are ready for newer things, better things, things that God has for us. So um, I just uh, thank you. This morning is our first, uh, is our first um, Sunday in 2020. I want to cast vision for what the Lord has for us for 2020. Um, those that are familiar with our church and have been here for a while, um, typically what we will do, and we will do that today, our staff, is, our pastoral staff are going to participate in the service. They're going to share vision for different areas of ministry. And uh, so last service was outrageous. It was just so cool to see all that God uh, has for us. The lower area was uh, completely full. I met a, a whole number of new families. In meeting a, a new person, he helped me. Um, it was their first time to the church. And um, I'm doing a vision casting day, and we're talking about the vision of the church and what God is doing. And so he introduced himself to me, went outside, and then he told his wife, he said, I need to go back and ask him, what does the seven stand for in Life Church 7? And I thought, you know, Vision Casting Sunday, that ought to be maybe one of the first things that we cover. <laughs> so you're getting a better, a better intro. Life Church 7 speaks to, and it was something that the Holy Spirit put into my heart and a group of us over probably over a period of five years. So it wasn't an instantaneous thing, it was the thing. And it, it came out of this, it came out of God's heart for our very specific corridor. And when I would drive through Benton City, I would think, how does God see Benton City? He doesn't see it impoverished. He doesn't see it needy. He sees his glory and his goodness, his wonder ready to be poured out on Benton City. He just needs people to agree with him about Benton City. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. West Richland. I live in West Richland. If we were to go with a name like the Tri-Cities, because we're here in Richland, it would leave out West Richland 58,000 people. And I said, I, you know, in this quarter, I don't want to leave anybody out. So I said, West Richland, that because maybe a lot of us, because we live there, that's going to get into the name, West Richland. It's part of the corridor in Richland. Is, is right in the hub of where we're at. And, and uh, Kennewick and Pasco, Finley and Burbank. So there's about, now there's about 400,000 people that live in this seven city corridor. But as we have grown and as God continues to move, we have a number of people who come from Hermiston. And we have people who come every week. We have people who drive three or four times a week who come from Othello. We have People who drive from Toppenish, Washington. People from Mapton. People from Prosser. People from Zilla. People from Connell. Some people drive an hour and 25 minutes to get here because they're hungry for one thing. They're hungry for the presence of the Holy Spirit. We call it revival. We call it revival. Yeah, we call it revival. <laughs> I met a whole group of people in the first service. People are here, and they just said, we heard about this church, and we came because we're hungry. Yeah. And I said, well, you, got, you came to the right place then, because we are hungry too. We want more of God. We want more of his goodness, and we want more of his presence. Amen. So that's a completely different start than I did in the first service. So our formation, and, and, and it's really important, when you go to a place, you want to know what their highest priorities are. How many have ever 
ever gone to, I went, in, in college, I was going to, um, I, it was the first time I was going to a church in Redmond, and I went to a different denomination. They were across from one another. And it's my sophomore year, and I'm a Assembly God preacher's kid, and I just love the moving and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I sat in this place, and it was like, it was a large building with maybe 50 people in it. And I sat there, and I thought, man, what's going on? And I nudged this guy to me next to me, and I said, where am I at? And he named the church, the denomination, and I go, oh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> and I asked him, I said, do you know where the Assembly of God Church is? He goes, yeah, they're across the street. I said, oh, okay, bless you. Because <laughs> we go where we're hungry. Never has there been a day where people are so hungry. The question is, what are we hungry for? In the kingdom of God, what is the highest priority? What is the highest priority? And I bet you I could get a hundred different answers here if I asked you. But our highest priority, I believe, according to what I preached last week, according to the word of God, is for us to walk in God's love. Our highest priority is for you and I to walk in God's love. It sets up everything else. I thought it was a winner. But you know, and, and so I'm, I'm not gonna go back to last week's message, and it was a great message, and I encourage you, if you didn't hear it, to go back and listen to that. But with that highest priority, then comes another highest priority, that with God's love comes his presence. And his presence, then, with his love and his presence, that becomes our highest priority. It becomes what we seek. We, we come and we just, we get... We, we love and know God. God knows and loves us. And his presence comes close. And it becomes our highest priority because everything flows from God's love. Amen. And we have seven different um, um, values, core values of the church. One, God is good. Two, that we believe that you should encounter his love. Three, is scripture. Four, is family. Five, we just believe in the supernatural. Because God's supernatural. He's super and natural. He's supernatural. You can't be saved unless you pass from death to life. That's supernatural. The world has stolen a term. And I didn't say spooky, did I? Supernatural's not spooky. There's nothing spooky about the presence and the wonder and the goodness of God. Amen. Serve is the sixth, and generosity is the seventh, and we'll talk about those. But those are core values that have this in company. It's important that your core values lead you to a primary value. A person can say, you know, I love God's word. But you know how I know if you love God's word? You read and memorize it. That's awesome. <laughs> Why would we uh, mentally assent to something and not do it? All right. Oh, I love God's word, and next month I'm going to get out and read a couple verses. <laughs> See, the word of God and the spirit of God together transform us to ongoing encounters of a baptism of God's love, his grace and his wonder, his goodness. It transforms the way I think. It transforms what I do. It transforms how I talk and how I live. I'm not, I, I, I am not, con I didn't have a moment of confusion in 2019. There, there was not a moment that I was confused. Jesus is, the, is, Jesus is on the throne. The devil's defeated. And we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen? Through God we do valiant. Listen to me. Through God, through God we do valiantly because it is he who treads down all of our enemies. The world is right in a place. Do you know that in Iran right now, 
the primary, big, one of the biggest revivals on the continent in the world is in Iran right now where tens of thousands of people are coming to Christ. Many of them are giving their lives up. Right in the middle of all this stuff with chaos and see, if we're afraid about saving our lives, we're gonna lose them for sure. But if we give up our lives for Christ's sake and the gospel, we find a life worth living for. In the Old Testament it says, unless the Lord builds the church, those who labor will labor in vain. Jesus is the king of the church. I have had people come, they often come, not on a weekly basis anymore, but they often come still, say, who's in charge around here? And I'll just tell the staff, I just tell them, Jesus. They go, well, no, I'm talking about the one who's running around down here. Oh, it's still Jesus. The church belongs to him. He bought it with his own blood. And listen to this promise in the New Testament. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah, amen. Yeah. So we are, a pre- we are a prevailing church. We are a prevailing church. And the kingdom of God in the seven city region, I have a, I, I, the Holy Spirit has shown me literal a, a vision in the night of uh, what God is gonna do in our region. But it's more than in our region, and it's more than the people that are coming. There is a fresh move of the grace of God and the goodness of God in the desert areas and over the Columbia Basin region. This is the in 2020, I believe it's gonna be an outrageous outpouring of God's goodness and his grace. And so our equipping team and our, our work together really comes from Ephesians chapter four, verses nine through 16, I believe it is, and that God gave the church apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Say with me, to equip the saints. So who's doing the ministry? So the devil has lied to a lot of people. Let's hire a good pastor so he can do all the work and we'll tip now and then. But we're actually... I'm this 240 pound gift to you. I've lost weight since the last, it used to be a 250 pound gift. The gift is dwindling. But our pastoral team, that were gifts to you to equip the saints to do the work of ministry so that we can mature into the full measure of Christ. We can become like Christ. So this morning, I think uh, Miles going to begin. She's going to start with Zoe. We're going to go through. And, and for all the people that are, how many are new within the last two years? Could you raise your hands? In the first service, it was over half the congregation. Let's welcome everyone. And yep, thank you. Well, I'd just like to take a moment and honor you, Pastor Wes. Can you just can we just honor him and his leadership and his faithfulness to serving? We love you and I'm his, for those of you who don't know I'm his daughter-in-law and so I get to see him as a pastor but also as a, a father-in-law and he's the real deal. We often come into his house and he's praying in the spirit and (laughs) whenever we go places, he's praying for people and he really lives out what he preaches and I'm so grateful for his hunger and his faithfulness and leading us so well, leading us so well. So we are blessed by your 240 pound gift to us. (laughs) And I'm proud of you, it's dwindling, that's great. Well, my name is Mael and I am the women's pastor here and our women's ministry is called Zoe and Zoe is a Greek word that means life and it pertains to both the physical and spiritual existence of life. So when Jesus says that I have come that you may have life and life more abundantly, he's saying that he, his design for us is that we would experience abundant life here on earth and in heaven. And uh, you know, Jesus came and he paid it all for you and for me, so that we could experience life and life more abundantly. Not just surviving life, but truly abundantly living, thriving. And I've been praying and asking God for a vision for 2020 for Zoe, and 
the word the Lord just keeps giving me is the word victory, that this is going to be a year of victory for not only just our church, but specifically for the women in our Zoe sisterhood. And 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says this, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have the victory in Christ over all things, over all things, not just some things, everything, that in Christ we are called, that we, we can walk in victory. That's why Jesus died, so that we could walk in victory. And so this year is all about uh, walking in victory, experiencing victory, and then being equipped to live that out. And so we have, through just the guidance of the Holy Spirit, strategically planned some moments for you, ladies, uh, to experience victory and be equipped to live that victory out. Every month, the first Wednesday of the month, we gather together for a Zoe gathering. And the first one that we're going to have is this Wednesday, January 8th, and we're calling it our Zoe Collective. Zoe Collective is a time where we get together, and it's a bunch of groups, different groups that get together with the purpose of community and discipleship. How many of you know there is power, we are better together, right? And as a sisterhood, so many of us feel lonely. And so the goal of this is that we would find victory in relationships and that we would uh, just learn and grow together. And so there's several different collective groups that you can choose from. There's Zoe Mom, and this is for every generation of moms. Moms, you're not alone. There's other moms on this journey with you. So this is for the new mom. This is for the seasoned mom. This is for grandma to come and join together and tell stories and encourage one another. How many of you moms get encouraged when you talk to other moms and you realize, oh, my kids aren't crazy. This is just what kids do, <laughs> right? There's something encouraging about that. So there's Zoe Mom. There's Zoe Intercession. Come and learn how to intercede and find victory in prayer. There's Zoe Flourish. It's for any woman who just wants to make friends and grow spiritually. There's Zoe Marketplace Ministry, which is a focus for women in business. Learn how to use your business to shine God's light in the marketplace. And then there's Zoe Creative. Any woman of any skill level who loves to create and creatively express God's love, this is for you. It's just, there's, we're going to have a great time. So come Wednesday. You don't have to pay or sign up. Just show up and join a group. Get connected. Be discipled and find victory in the victory in the areas that you've been asking victory for. I believe in God's going to. God's going to bring victory to you this year. February 5th, Rita Springer will be with us. How many of you have heard Rita, experienced Rita? So Rita's incredible. I listened to Rita growing up, and her music touched my soul. And uh, we are so blessed to have her come February 5th. She has several albums out. She's also written a couple of books. She's a prophetic worship leader, so anointed. Ladies, you don't want to miss this. I've had a few guys ask, can we come? Well, we definitely need security for that night. So if you'd want to come do security, talk to me. I'll hook you up. <laughs> but this is primarily for our ladies. Um, it's just going to be a powerful night of worship with Rita. So we just want to invite you to come. It's a free event. Uh, you don't want to miss this. Bring your daughters, bring your mom, bring your friends. You don't have to go to church here to come to this event because we're all about the big kingdom, right? Not just our Life Church 7, about reaching as many people as possible. And then March 6th through 7th, we have our Zoe Conference. It's uh, Friday night and Saturday. The theme is victory. And we have a special guest with us, Christina Gilbreth. Her and I were friends in college. She is a prophetic worship leader. She's anointed a speaker. You don't want to miss this. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a night of ministry on Friday. And then Saturday is going to be all about being equipped to live in victory. So you'll hear from different voices within our Zoe community as well as from Christina. So it's going to be powerful. The cost is only $20. So we have a lot of exciting things coming up. That's just the first three months. So we'll see what else God does the rest of this year. But what I'd like to do as I end is just... Any lady, if you're a chicken here, would you just stand up in the balcony? Just stand. Every lady in here, stand. If you're a female, stand. Ladies, I just want to say this message of victory is so powerful. The Lord has just been speaking it over and over and over. And it really ties in well with the heart uh, Pastor West has for this church the love of God. It's the love of God expressed through Christ that gives us the victory. And each of you, you have different areas in your life that you've been asking and you've been praying and believing God to bring victory in. And this is a year of victory for you. I'm prophetically declaring that and I'm going to pray it over you right now. That this is going to be a year where you're going to see victory in your health. You're going to see victory in your relationships. You're going to see victory in your finances. You're going to see victory in what God has, has called you to do. 
clarity. So I just want to pray that over you as I end. Lord, I thank you for every woman that is standing. God, you see her. You know her story. She has not gone unnoticed by you. So Father, right now I pray that you would wrap your loving arms around each and every one of them. May they sense your love for them. Jesus, I thank you that in you we have the victory over all things, not just some things, but all things. So right now I just declare health over those who have been facing difficulty in their health, that this is gonna be a year of victory in their health, healing and wholeness in your mighty name, Jesus. I pray and I just speak victory in relationships, in marriages, that relationships and marriages will be restored. Family relationships will be restored. That sons and daughters that are far from you will come to know you. Thank you, Jesus, that victory, there's gonna be victory in households, victory in relationships, victory in finances, victory in the emotional, where there have been wounds, God, you're gonna bring healing and wholeness. Where there's been brokenness, God, you're gonna make complete wholeness a reality. And I thank you for that victory. Lord, we thank you that you know every story and you know the victory that they so desire. And so, Lord, we just ask that this year would be a year of victory and we choose to walk in it and we lean into you, Jesus, and all that you have for us. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you ladies Wednesday. Thank you, Pastor Mael. Can we give it up for Pastor Mael and her leadership and her church? Thank you. Speaking of Rita, I will be on security that night because Rita Springer is incredible. My wife and I went to Bethel Music Conference and the most anointed session was the one Rita Springer led and it was amazing. So you're gonna wanna be there if you're a lady and guys, the security team's open. So um, I'm Pastor Mark, I'm the Connections Pastor and, and help with the, uh, lead the facilities here at the church as well. And I just wanna share with you a couple resources that we have, a couple things coming that get you connected. Um, really... My heart is, I really felt like God gave me a couple words to share with you, and one is, this is a season for you to connect. This is a season for you to connect. Connect with God and connect with community. Uh, I think as we grow as a church, the larger we get, the easier it is to stay anonymous and to stay hidden. This is a season to come out of hiding and come into community. Come out of hiding, come into community with the Lord, and come into community with one another. That's really my heart for you, and I think that's a word for many of you. This season, 2020, is a time of connecting uh, with God. And uh, the other thing I, I really thought was this, is, is one of the reasons we struggle with connecting is the biggest danger to faith today is distraction. We are the most advertised, marketed to generation in history. I saw a stat that said that our attention span is less than goldfish. <laughs> goldfish have a seven second attention span and we have less than that. And the danger with that is, is when we get quiet with the Lord, we get distracted from actually hearing from him. This is a season of focus. This is 2020, it's a season of vision. 2020 is about vision, it's also a season of focus. I've heard it said, if the devil can't destroy you with bad things, he will distract you with good things. And it's time for us to focus on the greatest thing, which is walking in love and being like Jesus. That's what it's about. So, a couple things on that, that's enough for preaching for me. Um, uh, I wanna talk to you about a couple resources on how you can connect. So in your weekly, you should've got something that looks like this. This is gonna help you connect. We want it to be easy for you to connect into the body of Christ. So if you have a weekly, grab this out, just wave it at me. I wanna make sure you got it. So go ahead, wave it at me. It's a little warm in here anyway, so use it as a fan. Just wave it, yeah, you got it. If you did not get one of these, ushers, I need your help. If you don't have one of these, raise your hand. Our ushers are coming right now. They wanna give you one of these so you can connect here. As they're doing that, one of the other things, speaking of distracted, is we have an app called the LC7 app. How many of you have the app? You, you're familiar with the app, some of you don't. We have an app, go on your app store. You can, grab, speaking of distracted, grab your phone. Go on the app, don't check the score. Grab the, your phone and um, go ahead and, and put Life Church 7 in your app store. And when you download that app, the platform will look like this. It's coming up on the screen. Uh, the, the screen, it'll look like this. And this is, makes it easy for you to connect into life groups, Sign up for water baptism, serve signups, family encounter. The one I wanna talk about is generosity though. We want you to be able to be generous here. And I give online, this is how I set up my giving so that when we do the celebration, I put my phone on that, it's pretty cool. But if you click generosity, it goes to this next slide. It looks like this, you can give one time, but if we go to the next slide, you can actually set up recurring giving here. This is how you can set up, very simple, very easy. And I heard Pastor Robert Moore say this, you are most like God when you give. 
And so we love to give. We love, we are created to give. God so loved the world that he gave. So we love to give. The other thing you can do on there is click serve signups and it'll go to a screen like this. Very easy to sign up to serve. You can see that that button is clicked on Life Kids 7. That isn't random. That is on purpose because that is our biggest area of need with our children. I have four kids, so I very much contribute to the kids ministry. Uh, so we need lots of people to sign up to, to serve there and get involved that way. Two other things I want to share and then I'll be done is uh, we have something called Intro to Life Church 7, uh, Life Intro to LC7 Family um, that's coming up here on January 15th. Let's just raise your hand. If you're new in the last two years, and I'm raising my hand too, would you just raise your hand and say, that's me, I'm, I'm new in the last two years. Yeah, me too, me too. We want you to get into family. And so this night is your first step into family. This night is your first step into family. So if you wanna come to this night, go ahead and check that on this. We wanna save a seat for you. And the second thing is we got a class coming up called Coming Closer, Fast Track to Revival Culture. What God is doing here is powerful, and as you can see, there's hardly any seats available. And I believe God is going to bring an outpouring in this year like we've never seen before. And so we need people who are trained to be leaders in the kingdom. That's what this class is all about. It's very similar to our school, but it, instead of nine months, it's six weeks. So you get a shortened version of what we do in our School of Supernatural Ministry. So who here wants to come closer to God? Amen, amen. That's what it's all about. So as uh, Josh and Robin come up here, those are different ways that you can connect and get focused on 2020. Let's give it up for Josh and Robin here. So good. Yeah, awesome. That's good. Awesome way to connect. All right, I am Pastor Josh. This is Pastor Robin, my wife. We are the directors of the first year school ministry as well as the youth pastors. And awesome. We're going to talk about a few things. I'm going to talk about our Bible reading plan that we do as a staff and as a church. You're invited to do that. I'm going to talk about a new class for new disciples. And then my wife is going to talk about youth. Before we really get started, though, I want to give all of you an opportunity to download the app now if you want to be on the Bible reading plan. And I'm going to show you some instructions on how to do that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about the discipleship class, and we'll get back into the, the Bible reading plan. So take out your phone. Like Pastor Mark said, this is like one of the few Sundays we want you to have your phone out during church. So if you want to download the app, take out your phone now. Put up that slide, if you would. And go to the App Store or the Android Store, whatever it's called, and type in version Bible app, and the app store, it looks like that, and it's the Bible, it says Holy Bible on it, so click on that, and you can download that. Once you download it, then this next screen will pop up, it'll ask you to, once you open that app, it'll ask you to sign in or sign up. You can sign up, uh, go to the next one using your email, using Facebook, or using Google. So go ahead and do that now, if, if you would like to, and then um, I'll give you some instructions later on how to get into the Bible reading plan. All right, how many of you know that 2020 is going to be an amazing year, right? We know that. But we also are believing for an amazing harvest, right? There's a billion souls that are going to be saved in a short amount of time across the world, right? And so one of the things that we want to do here at Life Church 7 to prepare for the harvest is to begin discipling people. And it's something that, that we've, we've talked about for a while. And so on the 19th of this month, we're going to start a new disciples class, and we, we don't want people just to get saved on a Sunday morning to raise their hand and say a prayer and then disappear, right? We want them to go from being believers to actually following and being discipled, amen? And so we're gonna start this class. Yeah, you can, you can clap for that, that's awesome. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna start this class on the 19th, and so I'll be overseeing that class. Um, it'll be eight weeks, and it'll be during this service, during the 11 a.m. service. So those that are part of it, we're gonna worship together, Worship's very important. It's a, an important part of following Jesus is to be in his presence and worship. So we're gonna worship corporately. During the connect time, we're gonna break off and we're going to that uh, classroom. We call it Glory Room 1, which is behind this balcony right here. And so we're gonna meet there for eight weeks. What we're gonna teach <clears throat> is these, these eight subjects, sinners to saints, gospel of the kingdom, kingdom identity, worshiping a good God, power of your testimony, kingdom life, what is truth, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so throughout the course of these eight weeks, um, the new disciples will grow in their identity. They'll grow in their understanding of the kingdom of God. They'll learn how to walk in truth, and they will know the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they will discover the goodness of God. 
Now, this class is open to all believers, um, age 16 and older. It's not for youth, but, you know, older high school students and older. Um, and if I would suggest if you've been saved, you've given your heart to Jesus in the last year or so, you probably want to go through something like this. It'll be a good foundation to get you going on the right path and help you to, to just come closer and closer to Jesus. Um, you can sign up several different ways. That card that Pastor Mark just talked about, it's on there. You can fill that out and turn it in. You can um, fill, it, fill out uh, an, a sign up on the app. You can email me directly, josh at lifechurch7.com. It's pretty easy to remember, josh at lifechurch7.com. You can email me. And then soon um, you'll see when we have altar calls on Sunday morning, we're actually, we'll actually have somebody down front. We'll be able to direct new believers to them personally where they'll be able to get connected with somebody right off the bat um, instead of getting you know, lost to the wayside. The last thing I want to talk about um, before we get into the Bible reading plan is discipleship is much more than eight weeks. Right? This is a good foundation. It'll be a good start, but it's actually something that, that we're called to do really for the rest of our lives is to be disciples. Right? We want to be disciples that make disciples that make disciples that make disciples. Amen? And so I'm asking those of you in here that have walked with Jesus for a while, if you're willing to come alongside somebody that's new in the Lord, please email me. And this will be a journey of actually walking with people discipling them and helping them grow. So you can email me, josh at lifechurch7.com, and I'd love to get you connected with some, some of the new folks. All right, you ready for the Bible reading plan? You got your app downloaded? I'm gonna go through a whole lot of slides. It's gonna be like a fire hose of information. So I, we don't have time to take questions now, but I'll be in the lobby afterwards, and I can help anybody get through this. Now, reading the Bible is important, amen? The word is important. To be able to walk in the love of God, we have to experience the love of God, and part of that is knowing his heart and knowing his word, amen? And so um, this is an invitation, like I said, to be part of the Bible reading plan that we're all doing. So <clears throat> now that you've downloaded that app, if you pull up that screen, that's what the homepage of the app looks like, okay? So you can click on the little button down at the bottom that says plans, and that'll take you to the search bar, and you can type in life journal reading plan. That's the plan that we do, and that plan gets you through the Bible in a year and the New Testament twice. Type in Life Journal Reading Plan, click on that. It'll pop up right at the top. Click on Life Journal Reading Plan. Now you want to click on Start Plan, and it'll ask you, how do you want to do it? So go ahead and click By Myself in the beginning, and then this part, you can either click Visible to Friends or Private. That part doesn't matter. Click either one. And so now you're, you're subscribed. You're part of the plan. Um, you're, you're on the same page as the staff and what we're doing. The only problem is we all started on January 1st. Today's the January 5th, so you're about five days behind. So to get you caught up, there is a way to trick the system. So you'll click on the plan. It'll pull up. Don't pay attention to the dates because the dates are wrong. You just click on day four. Okay, day four was yesterday. So you click on that, and you'll check mark Genesis 9, Genesis 10, Genesis 11, and Luke 4. That'll complete that day. It'll look like that. Click on that check mark. Then you'll click the very top menu, the top right. And you'll just click that button that says catch me up. And that shifts the dates. And so now you're on the same day as everybody else. Day one is now January 1st on your phone. And you're in unity with the rest of us, right? <clears throat> so it's as simple as that. I know there's a whole lot of slides and a lot of information. Um, like I said, I'll be in the lobby to help you if you have any questions, I helped several people last service. Um, but yeah, we'll be out there. And now it's my lovely wife's turn to talk about youth. Awesome, man. I'm so glad that he lives with me so he can do that for me. So I don't have to worry about that. Amen. I am so excited. I am Robin. I love youth. That's pretty much, that should just be uh, my life story is I love and breathe the presence of the Lord, but I also love and breathe and pray for your students. If you are sixth through 12th grade, um, I love you. I want to meet you. I want to know you. I want to speak into your life. What we do is we meet every Wednesday from 6.30 to 8.30 over in the small auditorium. We believe that there is no such thing as a junior Holy Spirit. We've said that before. The same thing that the adults do, our students can do. And there's something that is happening in 2020 where we are speaking and casting vision into our students where they're gonna be the ones that are going out and we're equipping them to do the ministry in their schools, in their homes, wherever they go. So they have a firm foundation of the identity of kingdom from heaven to earth.
earth. Um, one of the things that I like to pray over our students, we did a Ephesians series, um, and this was a scripture that just rocked me to my core for my students. So I kneel humbly in awe before you. I'm sorry, it's Ephesians 3, 14 through 17. 16, I'm sorry. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus, the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on, on the earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you, and I actually insert youth, and I pray that he would unveil within our youth the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods their innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. This is what we're doing in our students, and this is what God's speaking to them. That's okay. Get excited. Josh has an amazing anointing to teach, as you clearly saw. He's very structured. I have a passion and a fire to preach, and so together we co-labor and love your students into a kingdom experience with the Lord. And so that's every Wednesday we have you, 6.30 to 8.30. Uh, we have student leaders on Tuesday afternoons. You can connect with us out in the lobby about that. We have youth camp that is coming up February 14th through 17th, where we can take the students from 6th through through 12th grade, take them out of the busy, get them unplugged, and press into and coming back to our first love, who is Jesus, and stepping into the presence so we can walk in his love. We also will have Silverwood experience um, in the summertime where we had a, a young man, he got saved just by going to Silverwood and connecting with community. And then we will also have youth camp July 31st through August 3rd. So save those dates. Come talk to uh, Josh and I out in the lobby. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to talk to you. And uh, God bless you guys. Yeah. I just want to take a. I just want to take a breath for her. <laughs> that was amazing, amazing. My name is Drew, and my wife Kaylee is over here. We're the young adult directors, pastors of. Uh, we're the young adult pastors at Life Church Seven. We're the directors of our second year school of supernatural ministry. And uh, we also lead uh, the missions trip to El Salvador, which we're getting excited about. So I uh, just want to talk to you a little bit. Uh, we made some changes this last year with young adults. We moved away from a, a weekly service on Thursday night into small groups. And so the small groups have been meeting uh, on Thursday nights. The leaders have been doing an amazing job, so thank you for that. Uh, the encouraging thing is the same power and presence of the Holy Spirit is in these small groups as it is on a Thursday night in service. And so we've seen God move so powerfully in these, in these moments, people having uh, encounters with the Lord. The first, one of the first nights we had it at the guy's house, uh, there was a gentleman who, who hosts uh, every Thursday night, and Cole was singing, "Welcome, uh, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. And as he was playing, the host, the, the, the gentleman, burst into tears. And he, he was trying to pull it back together for about 20 minutes. And so we just, we just see the presence of God just show up in such a sweet way. We also do communion every week together. We do communion, and we, we get into the Word. And so if you're a young adult age, we say 18-ish to 29-ish, and you want to be a part, come see me out in the lobby afterwards. We'll get you connected and plugged in. And uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing what God's doing. How many know that the number one demographic in the United States that is unchurched is or when people leave the church is actually the 18-year-old demographic. The largest unchurched demographic is the 18 to 21-year-old demographic. And so at Life Church 7, Pastor West's heart is that we would have community and family available for every age group. Amen. And so it's actually pretty rare to have a full-time young adult pastor. It's actually a gift to your family and I'm a 200 and something pound gift <laughs> to your to your young adults. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we love it. Pastor West also wanted me just to talk briefly about the closing of our service. How many appreciate the last 10 minutes of the way that we end the service every Sunday? As a staff and under the leadership of Pastor West, we take time and we reflect on the services and how they're going, whether it's the offering or the preaching or, or, or the worship. We take time and we pray and we intentionally strategize for the services. And one of the most important parts we believe for Life Church 7 is the last 10 minutes of every service. You've had an encounter with the Lord. You've experienced him through worship. You've been, you've been uh, taught and fed and uh, through the word and encouraged. 
And then at the end, we get an opportunity, and I just want everyone to know that this is an opportunity. When people come down, uh, our prayer partners come down, it's an opportunity to get healed, to get set free, to get delivered. We see uh, miraculous healings every Sunday right here. We see legs grow out. We see backs instantly healed. I've seen scoliosis dissolve. Personally, I've watched it happen. Back straighten right in front of my eyes. And so we take the last 10 minutes seriously because God shows up in power and encounters us. So the invitation for Life Church 7 is in the, those 10 minutes at the end of every service, and Pastor will lead us today in, the, in those last moments, here in just a few moments, and the last service was powerful. We, wanna, we want to not walk out of this church the same way we walked in, amen? We want the Holy Spirit to do that deep, powerful work. How am I to respond? So it's an invitation to respond to what God is doing, what he is saying, and how can I be changed? And those last 10 minutes are very strategic for that to happen, amen? Awesome. Pastor Nate, come on up. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Drew. Okay. We're almost there. My name's Nate. Oh, come on, guys. So good to see you. I am not a 200 and something pound gift to you. I am only 184 pounds. Not quite the size of gift you were hoping for, but I'm still a gift. But I get to lead, <laughs> I get to lead mighty men. Where are my mighty men at? So much better. And what's cool is I didn't get to watch my wife live uh, do the Zoe part, but I got to see it on Facebook Live because I was taking care of my son. So men, where are you? Stand up because I'm going to pray for you right now. I love that idea. Men, now. If you, even if you're, a, if, you do, if you're like, man, am I 16, 18? I don't know. If you're a guy, stand up. Even young boys, stand up. Okay. Because we want to impart the next generation. Amen? So I want everyone to extend their hands towards these men. And men, lift your hands up. We're going to just pray a, a double portion of God's anointing on you. So Father, right now I pray for every guy to encounter you in such a powerful way right now that they would lead their families. Mighty men, are, are, it's all about being called and set apart to make a difference in every life we touch. From our families to our, our co-workers, everywhere we go, I pray that these men would set a standard of how to love their families, to love you, and to love the world well. I pray that you'd raise every man up to be a mighty man of God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, fellas, you can sit down. Thank you for that. And by the way, this Saturday, we are going tubing. True story. We're leaving the church 7 a.m. Bring your son and daughter if you want to because we want to give our wives the Saturday off, okay? So show up 7 a.m. We're going to go to Tollgate. It's going to be amazing, and we're going to have a lot of fun. So don't miss that, all right? Ladies, write it down because they will forget, but it's this Saturday, okay? All right. Small groups, small groups. I also get to lead small groups. Um, we have an amazing amount of growth that we've seen in our church, which means that we need to have more small groups. In fact, we have more people than we have small groups available. We have people literally on a waiting list for small groups to start. So if you're interested in starting a group or want to be a part of that or hosting, I have a leadership training meeting on um, January 26th. Say January 26th. Thank you. That's a Sunday. Second service in S103, which that exit sign right over there, you go that way, but don't exit to the right. Stay into the left, okay? And we're going to do a training. So if you're interested in, in hosting or starting a group, that'd be great because as we grow larger, we have to get smaller. We don't want anybody to not feel connected and be a part of what Life Church 7 is doing. Amen? All right. Small groups, make sure they're the last and final thing that I get to oversee is kids' ministry. One of the reasons I am bald, thank you very much, but we love kids. Come on, don't we love kids? That should, we should do a louder cheer in that. Come on, we love kids. And um, one of the things I want to highlight, if you have a third through fifth grader, we have an awesome event called Nitro coming up in February the 28th and 29th. You can sign up at the Info Hub or on the app or different things like that. It's right here in Pasco. It's just a day trip. We go up for the day, come back. You pick them up, and then we go Saturday. It's February 28th, 29th. And uh, it's going to be an, a powerful time for your kids. We went last year, and we're going to go again this year. But I just want to say thank you. Will you wait, raise your hand if you volunteer in kids? Raise your hand if you volunteer in kids. All right. Thank you so much. 
All right. I just want to say thank you and also want to just pray. If you're interested at all in volunteering for kids and you can pass a background check, find me. We would love to have you sign up, all right? Let's welcome Pastor Wes as he comes. Thank you. If you were new or you came here and you were hoping to hear a 35, 40, 50, 55 minute message next week, I am ready to roll. And uh, we're going to have a, an amazing time. I think today was just so good. Thank you, pastoral staff, for um, just casting vision. Yeah, and clarifying. The worship, worship team could come on. If you, all of you would stand with me. And um, <laughs> last week when I spoke, um, I realized that we were up a little bit, but we were declaring God's word. How many were here last week? How many were touched by God's word last week? It was just so powerful. So I want to I wanna finish this time with um, a message that I'm going to, because we have a super intelligent group, I'm going to finish this, my message with two minutes. Put on your thinking cap, <laughs> your glory cap. Number one, for 2020, and you've heard it said, God is calling us to walk in love. Ask God to encounter you with a bath, a fresh baptism. I want you to say, Lord Jesus. Oh, just all of us this morning, say, Lord Jesus. I need, I want a fresh baptism of the love of God. I want to encounter you in 2020 like I've never encountered you before. Yeah. Number two, walk in hunger. Holy Spirit, I want, in 2020, I want, Holy Spirit, for you to increase a hunger for Jesus, a hunger for the love of the Father, a hunger to know you. There's nothing worse than going to a beautifully um, provided dinner and not be hungry. The person who presented the table for you, you go, oh, don't you like what I made you? Aren't you, don't you want this? And, and often you come in, as adults, we fake it, or like myself, I can go ahead and eat twice. So I'm always hungry. But spiritual hunger. Are you hungry for more? Do you want more of Jesus? In 2020, is your hunger, are you thirsty for more of him? I mean, ask your heart that. Am I really hungry for more? Do I just want to go through the way it was? Or, Lord, this year set my heart on fire. I am hungry for more of you. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The third thing that the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart was that we're to walk in humility. We're to walk in humility. Hear my heart. No more friendly fire. No more friendly. We live in a toxic political environment. We somehow have empowered ourselves to think that we can love God, love his kingdom, love his presence, love his church, but say things about one another or say things about other church that are condemning, that are critical, that are hurtful, and we don't realize that we're grieving the Holy Spirit. And so in 2020, with the help of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, no more, no more friendly fire, no more things from my lips that cur curse or condemn or speak ill of people because you're the answer your baptism of your love and your grace, it's your answer to come and set our hearts on fire to love the seven cities well and to see our region, to see our nation transformed with the love and the power of God. And number four, it's the fastest message I've done this year. <laughs> to walk in discipline. Please look at me. You can never be in the effective in the kingdom of God without discipleship, without discipline. Reading the word of God isn't a mandate, isn't work. It's a lifeline. 
In him we live, live and move and have our being. You cannot do well in the kingdom of God without daily being in your word, but we actually need the Holy Spirit to come and to set our hearts on fire with a hunger for God's word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Great peace have they who love your law. Nothing will offend them. What if we just collectively just said, Lord, I'm hungry. Let's say that, Lord, I'm hungry. Give me a passion for your word. Give me a passion for your presence. Put a guard over my mouth. No more friendly fire. Remove my heart. Not don't remove my heart, but remove the criticalness of my heart. Yeah, it's hard work. Because it's the next thing I'm going to. If you bow your heads, and just close your eyes with me. The Holy Spirit put this in my heart that it would free us up for 2020. The Lord spoke to my heart that for some, what has grown in our heart because of friendly fire, because of hurts and wounds, things that we've experienced, we've gone through life and we really have been wounded by other people, things that have been said or done to us, and we've not been willing or able to forgive. And now what we're dealing with is a root of bitterness. We've got a root of bitterness. We find ourselves unable to forgive. We find ourselves joyless. We, we find ourselves kind of just going through the motions. We find ourselves empty. We find like it's our spirit that's just getting squeezed and it's a root of bitterness. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. God spoke to my heart. And today is freedom. It is freedom for people. So I'm gonna just ask you just to honor the people around you, just to bow your heads, to close your eyes. And if you just sense, you know what, there is, there's stuff in my soul. There's this root. There's this thing that is keeping me from God's love and His grace, from loving people well. And as I start 2020, I'm gonna lift my hands. I'm gonna say, Lord, I wanna get rid. I'm gonna be free, free of any root of bitterness. Would you hold your hand up? I'm gonna pray for you because the Holy Spirit is here to free you. And no one's looking around. Just hold your hand up. You know what's going on in your own soul. And today is the day of freedom. Just hold your hand up and I'm gonna pray. So Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the balconies and all across this, all across this room, those who are struggling, Lord, that because of unforgiveness and brokenness and hurts and wounds inside of their soul, there is this root that has grown in there. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I crush, smash, and I destroy that root of bitterness in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And those, no one looking around, those that have your hands lifted up, I want you just to say, Lord Jesus, yeah, all across the room, we'll just all say together, Lord Jesus, forgive me for not willing to be forgiven. Cleanse me, Lord. Wash my mind. Wash my heart. I choose to forgive those who have wounded me, who have hurt me. I no longer will allow, with the help of your spirit, this root to be in my heart and soul. And I ask Jesus to come and give me a baptism of your love. Yeah, everybody raise your hand now. We just want, Lord, we just lift our hands right now. We ask for a baptism of your love. We ask all across our congregation, all of us, we need a fresh baptism. Welcome Holy Spirit. We ask for a fresh baptism of your love, of your goodness of your grace, of your mercy, of your love, of your wonder. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you. We welcome you. We welcome you, Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. I want us all to lift our hands and I want us to sing a song I've written in the morning. And it goes like this. I delight in you. I delight in you. Come on, worship singers. Yes, Lord, I delight in you. I delight in your goodness, Lord. I say, holy, holy, holy. I delight in you, Jesus. I delight in your wonder. Oh, Lord, I delight 
in songs and spirit hymns and spiritual songs sing and make melody in your heart to the Lord delight yourself in the Lord he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the Lord rest in him he'll make your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday only do not fret delight yourself in the Lord so would you lift your hands again and would you just begin to delight yourself in the Lord say Lord I delight in you yeah, Lord, I delight in you. We delight in your goodness and your favor, Lord. We say holy, holy. We say holy, holy. 2020, we delight in you. We thank you for increase. We delight in you. You're a good and a gracious God. We delight in you. We say holy, holy. Thank you, Lord. Our worship, our prayer team is going to come and they're going to spread out. And I'm going, to, as they're coming, I want to pray a prayer of blessing, amazing blessing on every person here. But the prayer team is going to come. If you have a need this morning, they're going to pray. The pastors are going to go out and they're going to work their way out in the area. We want to just be able to answer questions and meet people. But the prayer team is going to be here. If you have a need and you need a miracle, you need healing, you need help, we want to pray with you this morning. So all of those that are here, would you just lift your hands towards me? And I want to bless you. So Father, I bless this congregation. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you for 2020 to lead and guide us. Would you reveal in a new and a fresh and an amazing way the love of our Heavenly Father, the wonder and the goodness of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would bless every person. Heaviness must go right now as I'm speaking. Yeah, confusion in mind and heart must leave now in Jesus' name. Depression must lift now in the mighty name of Jesus. It must go. And I bless our people and I declare your goodness, your favor, unusual favor. I pray for those who need new jobs that you'll give them amazing new jobs. I pray, Father, for increase, bonuses. I pray, Father, for unusual favor at their work site. I ask, Lord, that they, we just walk in amazing grace and goodness. I bless each one. We release each one, Lord, to an amazing day. And we thank you because we delight in you, Jesus. <laughs> we delight in you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You are free to go. If you would like prayer, we would love to pray with you. God bless you.